But in the meantime, most law offices I go into is usually a lawyer and a secretary. Is this what you call a law firm? Is there a difference in just a law office and a law firm? Could you tell me something about running, uh, managing a professional law office? This is more or less a law team. I have extremely experienced and most importantly, very dedicated individuals. Individuals that try to treat each and every client, each person that they represent, whether it be the most minor and simplest traffic ticket or possession of marijuana to a murder case. They try to treat the individual as if they're their own family and try to represent them and defend them as if they'd want somebody in their family, their loved ones, defended. So what we do is we have meetings, we run different problems, proposals, strategies, the law, we kick it around between each other. I'm an experienced former prosecutor, former federal prosecutor. Jerry Saluti was a prosecutor in Bergen County, has practiced for many years. Brooke Barnett worked as an investigator for the Public Defender's Office. She did very, very well in law school. She was a moot court member. She ran to the, one of the top state moot court members in the state of Florida and the state of the United States in competition. We have paralegals. We have investigators. I've actually hired individuals that I call essentially street people. One individual is Aziz Abdul Shabazz, who has spent almost his entire life in and out of the system, both state as well as federally. He's presently in a halfway house. I've hired him to work as a paralegal here because he knows the streets. He knows what's right and wrong. He knows how to take apart a case, how to treat individuals, how to investigate a case. I've hired Abdul Williams, who's known on the street as Mutalik, and other individuals who's been in the streets, who knows the streets, knows the system well, to work for my law firm. He knows how to treat people. He knows how to investigate cases. He knows how to take cases apart. I've hired an individual by the name of Mike Sherbo, who's now on intensive supervision program, to work as a paralegal. Again, based upon his experience of being inside the system, he knows how the system works, he knows how to attack and take apart a case. So we have a great team concept, we have investigators, we have paralegals, we work as a team, and we defend and we fight just like you'd want your own children defended. So we're fortunate to have you in our town. You're originally from New York, correct? Originally born and raised in Brooklyn. How long have you been here in Jersey? In 1980 was my last duty station as an officer in the United States Army. They sent me to Fort Dix to run a, a division called the Trial Defense Service. Essentially, we were in charge of representing soldiers actually throughout the world that were charged with serious felonies and I was put in charge of that program and our base station was Fort Dix because it was next to McGuire Air Force Base so we could hop on a plane and I could go to, I represented soldiers in Panama accused of murder and rape, uh, soldiers in the Azorean Islands accused of smoking marijuana, all really Germany, Kuwait, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, all over the world and that was the, really the first time I stepped foot in New Jersey in approximately 1980. Um, I was raised and born in Brooklyn. I lived in Hell's Kitchen in New York. I spent a year in the St. John's Boys Home in uh, Brooklyn on St. John's Avenue. And essentially my roots are from New York. Uh, were you at, at the St. John's Home as a, um, for committing a crime or was that something like those schools they send rich kids to? No, I was, <laughs> I was 14 years old and the allegation was that my father was a New York City police officer, street police officer. The allegation now was that, was that my father assaulted me very seriously. And I ended up spending um, almost two weeks in the hospital. And internal affairs kept questioning me as to who beat me up. And essentially, I told them that it happened on the streets. And they, they believed that it was my father who did it. So essentially, I was taken away from my, my family at the time, and I spent a year there because I wouldn't cooperate with the Division of Youth Services. You know, that happens to so many of our children today. It does. Uh, so, uh, did you feel angry with anyone? I was very angry at the system, of course. Did your family stay in close contact with you? 
they really weren't allowed to. I wasn't, have any, I wasn't allowed to have any contact with my father, who they accused of committing this offense, although he was you know, totally innocent. And essentially, I, I stayed in contact with my mother, my brother, and my sister. Oh. oh, I didn't know that happened to you. Is this something that sort of motivates you to reaching out to others? It definitely had a, an effect upon my life. I think about it almost every day of my life. Okay, I look around your office and as we enter, there's a lot of awards and pictures. I was hoping that we could get a chance to go around and look at it, explain some of them. You have children? I have children. Children, boys, girls? Boys and girls. Boys and girls, how many? I have uh, two girls. I have actually three girls and one boy. Any of them going into law? No, they don't want any part of it. <laughs> they don't want any part of it. <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to work the kind of hours, and essentially dedicate their lives the way I have. Uh, okay. Well, sometimes if you're a doctor, it's even more hours. I don't think that an individual could put more hours in. I don't think they have that more hours in their body than I do. Okay. Well, I would like to meet some of your staff and look at your awards and. You have some uh, movie stars, I say Queen Latifah, you work with her? I've, I've represented her, and she's a, a personal friend of mine, Dana Owens, her mother Rita Owens. I knew her brother Lancelot Owens, and I knew her father Lance Owens when he was a Newark police officer. So I've known Dana Owens while she was a gospel singer when she was 12 years old in uh, East Orange, New Jersey. Okay.